Hi, welcome back to Home Time. We're in the process of building a house we're calling the Stone Cottage. It's been fun watching it all come together from the plans drawn up by the architects Mike Sherritt and Nora Kirkwold. We've gotten a lot of comments on the roofscape, especially since we started putting on the slate. Now our heating and cooling system will obviously be using electricity, but the main source for heat is going to be coming from the ground. Well, we're going to be using geothermal in here, and uh, Jim Cusack is going to help us put this whole thing together. I'll tell you, you really get people's attention when you tell them you're installing a heating system that's going to save three, four times the amount on your energy bill compared to using gas or electric. You do, Dean. Yeah, everybody's pretty interested when you're telling me you're going to save 70%. Okay, now you brought along a little model here for geothermal. Why don't you kind of demonstrate how the whole system works? Well, Dean, we're going to be drilling a series of holes out in the yard, 180 feet deep. So there's 360 feet of pipe going to go in each one of those holes. This model just represents that. And the way they'll all tie together, this headering system will go below the frost line, about five feet into the ground. We're going to fill the system with water and food grade glycol to circulate it to, to either extract or reject heat into the ground depending upon whether we're heating or cooling the house. And then we use a refrigeration system to extract and multiply that heat. In the summertime you just reverse that process. Exactly and you, and you suck the heat out of the house and you're able to dump that heat down in the 50 degree water of the loop field rather than trying to reject the heat into the 100 degree outside air. So much more efficient way to do it. So where do we get started on the whole thing? We're going to have a drill rig out here next week and we're going to start drilling holes. Well, all you can see right now are these stubs here, but we have over a thousand feet of pipe buried in the ground back here for our geothermal heating system. We've had Matt Schwartz and Jack Vernala working a couple of days now with the same type of heavy duty equipment used for drilling wells. But of course, the idea here is to create a series of closed loops going down about 180 feet and take advantage of the constant temperatures underground to heat the house in the winter and cool it in the summer. David Henrik's been spearheading the operation here. So David, it's basically boils down to drilling a whole bunch of deep holes and setting some closed loops. So give us an idea how that works. Uh, the drilling process that we're using on this particular site is mud rotary. What that means is that we're using a fluid to lift the cuttings out of the hole as we're drilling the sands and clays that are out here and, and making the boring that we're going to set the loop in. So then once your holes are drilled, you're ready to put the pipe in there. How do you actually get the pipe down? Well, when we drill the borehole, we're leaving a four and three quarter inch boring with that drilling fluid still left in the boring. So it kind of holds the walls open so it doesn't just fall in. We'll actually tie a, a 50 pound weight to the bottom of the, the loop, actually tape it on. And then the loop itself is also filled with water to, to overcome the buoyancy of being set into that mud fluid. We set it in with the trimming line so that we can grout the hole and fill it back up so that there's no risk of contamination. So the pipe, I guess, would have to be bulletproof, right? Yeah, the pipes are high density polyethylene. It's not your, you know, some people say, oh, it's just that stuff you use for sprinklers. No, it's, it's much thicker, much more durable. Uh, it, it has the ability to expand and contract as, as we heat and cool the home. Okay, thanks for all your help. You're welcome. Well, the big job right now is covering the upper floors with these radiant floor heating tubes. It's a simple concept. You heat the floor by running hot water through pipes in the floor. But with multiple loops, different zones, manifolds, pumps and valves, it can get a little complicated. Of course, on a system like this, you need some type of master plan. Andy Leiter's working on, uh, working on that plan. It seems like everything's going pretty well so far. Yeah, everything's going great so far. Uh, we're three quarters of the way done with laying the tubing, and uh, everything's been going really good. So talk to us about what, what is the magic of the spacing of these tubes on the floor? Well, the magic is towards the outer, outer perimeters of the house where the windows are, there's a greater heat loss. We, we gap our tubing a lot closer out there to accommodate the heat loss of that area. And as we get further in the room, we can gap further apart to even out the floor and even out the room more so. And one of the advantages of a system like this is you can zone individual rooms. Kind of tell us on, on the plan here how that works. Well, we can fill this room with a separate loop and then it'll separate these from the zones, different zones around the house. And then we can put it on a separate thermostat to control just one area. Oh, that's the beauty of a system like this. Well, I didn't mean to uh, interrupt you. I know you guys are busy, so I'll let you get back right. at it. Thanks, Thanks Andy. I got to tell you, looking at the inside of this room, I think Andy and the boys absolutely did a gorgeous job. Many people say it kind of looks like the boiler room, the Titanic down here. Now realize most of the heat's going to be coming from our geothermal system, 
in conjunction with this heat pump. Now, none of this stuff is hooked up yet. Actually, where the heat's coming from is this boiler. Jim Cusack was here a while back to kind of explain how the whole system operates. Well, the boiler is going to be used as a backup source for the geothermal system. The boiler is 95% um, efficient. We're also going to use that to heat all of our domestic hot water. And so it'll always have a job to do. Another nice thing about this gas boiler is it gives us kind of a dual fuel option. Our heat pump, which runs off electricity, is what we use most of the time. Now, the electricity company gives us lower rates if they have the ability to cycle that off during their peak periods. When that cycles off, this thing turns on and our heat keeps going. It gives us a lot of savings and energy costs. So anyway, once the water's heated up, it travels from the boiler over to this tank. And this, again, is not your typical piece of goods right here. It's a tank inside of a tank. With our geothermal system, we need a buffer tank and that holds hot water that supplies the floors for the radiant floor. The inner tank is then um, domestic water. And so we're preheating domestic hot water using the geothermal system. And then to top that all off, it's got a coil in the bottom of it that we can hook up to the boiler as used for the backup. So once all the water's heated up in this outer tank, it heads out this tube up along here through this pump, which is another key component to the whole operation. You know, any radiant floor system needs a pump, and what's really different about these pumps is that they're driven with DC power instead of AC power. They use rare earth magnets, and they use up to 80% less electricity than a standard pump would. So once everything gets pumped through that pump right there, it heads up in a couple different directions. Those tubes into the manifolds on the top two floors, comes down these pipes also into these manifolds that send water through these tubes into the floor. Once it's run through the floor, done its heating thing, it comes back through these tubes into these manifolds, up these pipes, and the whole process starts all over again. And everything is controlled by this guy right here. So it has an outdoor temperature sensor, which actually tells the system what the outdoor temperature is, and it varies the temperature of the water going to the floors. Now once we get our geothermal hooked up and our heat pump running, we'll visit both mechanical rooms, bring you up to speed on how all this stuff works, because it is state of the art. It's, uh, it's very fascinating. ongoing projects we've been following here has been the installation of our geothermal system which we're using to heat and cool the house and we're ready for the next step now which is out in the backyard. You might recall the drilling we did a couple months ago for the nine geothermal loops that we've got back there. The crew is using the same type of rig that you'd have for drilling a new well so it was no problem going down 180 feet for each loop. After reaching the proper depth for each hole they just pulled the drill pipe out and sent down the loop. The loops are made of HDPE, which stands for high density polyethylene, and they're actually two continuous lengths of one inch pipe with a bullet shaped U bend fitting at the front to lead the way down the hole. With some pipe, you have to attach the fitting and then wind the two pipes together on site. But this one is actually done at the factory with a fusion bond, so they send it out on a coil as a single loop, all ready to go underground. And that saves a lot of time in the field. What they're doing today is connecting all the loops to a header system, which will eventually tie into a couple of pipes that we have going into the house. The header system has to lie below the frost line, so Matt Schwartz is using a backhoe to dig down a few feet around the tops of the loops so that they can access them at the right depth. Now Dave Henrik has been coordinating all the digging and drilling for us. It's important to have those pipes below where the ground is going to freeze so the earth isn't tugging on them. Also, when the ground gets cold, obviously it's going to make the fluids in the pipe a little colder. So we want to make sure we're down as reasonably low as possible so that we can minimize thermal impact and minimize damage from the earth freezing and thawing. Once the trenching is done, now we're ready for our header system. They're using some more of the high density polyethylene along with enough T fittings to tie in the tops of all of the loops. And then instead of glue, they use heat to make the connection from pipe to pipe. It's called socket fusion because it uses one of these fusion irons to literally melt the pipe and bond it together. The fusion iron heats up to over 500 degrees and has adapters which bolt on both sides of the heater to accommodate different pipe sizes. Once it reaches the required heat, the pipe and the fitting are set inside the adapters and warmed up to their melting temperature. At that point, they're pushed together and held tightly until they're totally fused. It creates a bond that's just as strong as the plastic itself, so it will never leak. Okay, now this is how it's all going to work once it's set up, so stick with me here. Water's going to come from the house, down this two-inch pipe. Now this is going to be our supply. It's going to feed our loop, 
So the water will go down one end of the loop, come right back up. It's going to feed this three-quarter inch pipe. That's going to go nine different times because we have nine loops on this system. Once the water gets to the end of the run, it's going to come back via another two-inch pipe, get connected up to the house, and the whole thing will start all over again. Of course, that's once the guys can get to setting that two-inch pipe. The bottom line is when you're doing this part of the project, there's a lot of cutting, digging, melting. Uh, it's hot. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a very cramped workplace, but it needs to be done. Well, the guys have the last few connections to make and then, of course, just a little bit of backfilling to do. And since everything is getting buried, durability is an issue, so it's important to go with the strongest material that you can find. We can't see them now, but we have nine geothermal loops buried back here. Each of them goes down 180 feet. And once it's all hooked up and running, it's going to save us about 75% on our heating and cooling. We also have an underground header system in place that feeds it all back into the house. The next step was getting the pipes from the loop field connected to the proper equipment in the mechanical room. That takes some of the same type of heat fusion that we showed you out back when they connected up the headers. Once all the connections were made, they used a pump to fill the loops with a mixture of water and food grade glycol, which will be cycled underground to absorb heat during the winter and to disperse heat in the summer. We'll keep you posted on how we get all of that hooked up and running once the major construction wraps up inside.